Well, I think undoubtedly it's a concern for me. It's a real um, focus for the government in relation to our work around closing the poverty-related attainment gap. We have made progress since 2019, but not as much as I would have liked to have, to have done. Um, we've made progress particularly in relation to advanced higher qualifications, but there is more we will need to do. Of course, there's record investment going into the Scottish Attainment Challenge, people equity funding. We also know that the gap in primary seven in literacy and numeracy is now starting to close. We had evidence of that published back in December, which is really I think welcome news and we also have record numbers of young people going on to positive destinations. However, as we continue to recover from the pandemic, there is more the government will need to do and local authorities in relation to closing that gap because the ongoing challenges of the pandemic and the cost of living crisis really can't be ignored in that context. I think the Covid years undoubtedly were difficult years for our um, young people and of course that's why the SQ took a bespoke approach to qualifications at that time and accreditation which hasn't existed in the past so it's very difficult to make comparisons from this year for example to uh, results that were awarded in 2021. There was a sensitive approach this year applied to grading and marking. I think that's important. That recognises that the full requirements of the qualifications were delivered this year and I think that's really important, that sensitivity around about the qualifications. So uh, I know, for example, in Modern Languages last year there was an issue in relation to listening and therefore they looked at grade boundaries uh, in that respect and there was a sensitivity applied. And I think it's hugely important we have that sensitive approach across the qualifications, particularly this year, when the ongoing impacts of the pandemic are still really being felt. I think next year the qualifications requirement will mirror those that existed in 2019. However, um, I'm not necessarily sure you can really compare where we are now to what happened in 2019 because we've got a cohort of young people who've lived through the pandemic and undoubtedly that has continued to impact on their educational outcomes. We need to be very mindful of that. We're also living through a cost of living crisis and I'm very mindful that that is impacting on attainment. So these external factors can't be detracted. However, it is true to say we are making progress in relation to closing the poverty related attainment gap. So the gap has narrowed since 2019 and certainly for advanced hires it's narrowed since last year. I would like to see more progress Progress, undoubtedly and as we move forward I look forward to working with our school communities and our local authorities who have responsibility at local level for the delivery of education on that.